Hello everyone and welcome to another video and welcome to Jeffrey Bates episode 2. I suggest you get in some snacks but also later in the video I suggest you exercise a little caution about when you eat them. You'll find out what I mean when we get there. Hello Persephone said how are you doing? I'm very well thanks. That's brilliant. You look like a lady on her second doctorate in psychology or something. I feel the intellectual stimulation already. So how's your day been today? Goodness, I studied ancient history many years ago. That's why I moved to Orkney a year ago. I love the historic sites here. I can feel the aura, he said. It's a very spiritual place. Did you see my photo of the Ring of Bruggar? Was it you that commented? And I'll show you what she meant, because this is part of Persephone's profile. It's a photo that I took a few years ago at the Ring of Bruggar in Orkney, and underneath he'd commented, Stones of Stenness, a remarkable sight. That's brilliant, he said, in reply to her saying she moved to Orkney a year ago. Loved history back then in school, but my dad wanted me to be a physicist or an engineer. Turned out to be the former. Yeah, I did. He said in reply to her asking if it was him that had commented. Yes, that was me. Pleased to meet you. What made you think Stenness? Have you been to Orkney? No, I actually watched a documentary on it a couple of months ago. How's Orkney, by the way? OK, the stones at Stenness are just down the road and also the absolutely amazing sight they're still excavating on the Ness. I love it here. I don't know how long I'll stay. You plan on moving? You're literally living in history. Sooner or later, it's a long way to visit my daughters. One lives in Leeds and one lives in Brighton. How about family? And they cross-posted on that one. That's true. You must be missing them. I too have a daughter. She's 13, though. I'm American, but living and working currently in Netherlands. What does your daughter think of the Netherlands? Does she speak Dutch? Oh, not at all. She lives in the States with our nanny. But you live in the Netherlands. Why would you leave her behind? Yes. I'm working under contract with the Dutch government in a wind farm project. I don't see why that means you have to leave her behind. NDAs and non-officials aren't allowed into their facilities except during family visits hours. Plus, she's known her nanny all her life and her friends over at home are all the folks she knows. Oh, I couldn't have taken a job and left my children behind. No, I didn't abandon my child, he said. Saying it that way makes it sound so awful. But I have to work to make a future for her. My company is in contract with our employer and we have to honour it, you know. I didn't say you'd abandoned her. I said you'd left her behind. You have. No, it's a contract. I get to go back spring next year. OK, where were you working before you went to the Netherlands? Where are you in the Netherlands? I used to have a friend there. I'm in Amsterdam, living within the facility here. Amsterdam's lovely. How long have you been there? Two years now. Do you keep fit by cycling everywhere? You know, Amsterdam, it's flat. The Netherlands, that's flat. Everybody cycles everywhere. I enjoy hiking too. How about you? Does that mean you do cycle everywhere? I do a lot of walking here on Orkney. No, not necessarily. Because you want to. Also, it's quite healthy too. Yes, I love it. Are you avoiding answering my question properly? No, I'm not. I thought that's all that's needed. I don't cycle everywhere, even though the Netherlands is a very green country. Also, I live within the facility I work. We mostly use little golf cart looking vehicles to move about. I cycle as a means of achieving personal fitness. How do you get around Amsterdam? You drive, you use public transport. I drive mostly when I'm back in the States. How about you? I'm asking how you get around Amsterdam. Stop avoiding the question. Let me clarify things, he said. I don't get to move around Amsterdam much because I live within the facility I work in. I told you earlier, we move about mostly with mini vehicles within the facility. Personally, I love cycling, but it's more about personal fitness than movement from place to place. So you never go into Amsterdam to go shopping or sightseeing or to visit the museums. How long have you been there? I do. Public transport or an Uber. Oh, OK. Hello, good evening. Still up? Sorry, I never looked at my messages last night. It's all right. Good evening. How was your day? It's been rather windy, so I was painting the bathroom walls. How was yours? By yourself? A tad hectic. But it's over now. How about work? What work? Your daily job. 
Or you on sabbatical or something? I don't have a job. My divorce settlement supports me. Oh, OK. How long have you been divorced? Eight years. Oh, been a while now. So you just basically travel, rent, live and admire historical sites around you now. A never-ending series of vacations, LOL. I think that's a rather simplistic view of life, said Persephone. A simple life is a good life, don't you agree? That isn't what I said. I know, I'm just saying. So how's it then? How's what? How's the day like for you since you don't work? It depends. I've been doing some research for a museum in Leeds where I used to live. We're working on a project to try and identify our ritual sites spread around the UK. It seems some practices may have started on Orkney and spread south. I volunteer in the Oxfam shop in Kirkwall some mornings or afternoons. I've been helping a few older folk with shopping and dentist or doctor visits. I'm on the local WR committee and the gardening club committee. I sometimes wonder I have had time to work. You're serving your community and you're blessed by that. Nothing better than to be of important service to another human. It's a good way to meet people when you move to a new area. Hmm, how long did you work? Or do you mean you were in some way doing all these while you were working? Rituals of what sort? I worked until my divorce. I was a secretary and had several jobs in Leeds while the children were growing up. In reply to him saying, rituals of what sort? Persephone said, we don't know. What was Stonehenge used for? No one knows for sure. What was the Ring of Broggar used for? No one knows for sure, but probably ancient forms of religion. Why were some sites abandoned? Was it because a new religion or belief took over? I see. Quite interesting, I must say. Are you studying while researching? Like a PhD? Or you got that already? No, I'm not. and No, I don't have one. It's just something I'm interested in. Occupies a good amount of your time too, he said. Oh, yes, it does. It's worthwhile, right? I suppose I could do some online study. Perhaps I'll look into that. Right now, is it? Your name is beautiful as well. I haven't commented on that. My mother chose it. Seems right you enjoy history and historical sites. Yeah, I suppose it is. She must have enjoyed Roman mythology. Or is it Roman now? Or Greek? Greek. No, she knew someone called Persephone and just liked the name. Oh, nice. A couple of days ago, I asked where you were before you went to Amsterdam. I don't think you told me. I assume back where your daughter lives. Where do you live in the US? My mother loved her friend's child so much. She named me Geoffrey as well, LOL. Delaware, Ohio. Yes, the States. I thought I answered. Sorry about that. Have you had dinner? You might have done. I could have missed it. It's all right. Oh, please tell me you aren't one of those men that's obsessed with my eating habits. What are you doing now? LOL. No. Running backwards round the airing cupboard. What are you doing now? Just making conversation. Talking with you. I was reading a book before we started chatting. What are you reading? Did you get to finish the painting today? To Kill a Mockingbird, Harper Lee. Yeah, it was just the walls. OK. You live alone at Orkney? What a strange question. Yes, I do. Doesn't it get a bit lonesome? No, I'm always talking to someone. Please tell me you aren't one of those old-fashioned men that thinks a woman can't function without a man. Women can function much better on their own than men can, you know. Oh, jeez, of course not. My mum pretty much raised me after my dad died in his early forties, and I was an adolescent then, so I know this firsthand. You haven't told me what you do apart from working on wind farms. Are you a builder? Not really. Too old to be a builder now. So what do you do if you aren't helping build them? I mostly direct the team. So you're the foreman. LOL. No, but we do get our hands dirty while working. Is this a guessing game? You don't build. You direct the team, but you aren't the foreman. What well, are you, the term and motion study person, or whatever they call it these days? Or are you really a labourer who fetches and carries for the builders? LOL. Not at all. I'll explain better in a bit. No, I'd like you to tell me now, please. Otherwise, I might start to think you're making up stories to try to impress me. I don't like men that do that. Making up stories, LOL? Why would I be doing that? That's a very strange response. I have no idea. OK, I lead a team of engineers and scientists. We do R&D, along with practical work on the wind turbines, repairs and fixes. That's how hands get dirty. OK, we research. And now our man is going to start tying himself up in knots. We research. 
on how to efficiently utilise the energy generated from the renewables, in this case wind turbines, and how best to transfer to communities and municipalities. Hi, you still there? Sorry, a friend rang. How do you transfer the energy? Via power lines, but a little different. What difference? I'm intrigued. Electricity, Google informed him, and I'll show you in a minute, generated from a wind farm will travel to a transmission substation where it's stepped up to a high voltage in the region of 150 to 800 kilovolts. It's then distributed along the electricity grid power lines to the consumer. How is that different? It is, he said. That's why electricity from dams and from wind farms are in itself different, but similar source of energy generation as a whole. Can't go into the bits, he said. Obviously, when you type something totally meaningless, it is hard to go into the bits. I thought maybe you'd slept off. In reply to him saying, that's why electricity from dams and from wind farms are in itself different but similar source of energy generation as a whole. Persephone said, could you say that again, please? So it makes at least a bit of sense. Electricity is electricity, guys. It's no different if it comes from a wind farm or from a dam. It's electricity. Off what? I don't know what you're talking about, she said in reply to him saying, I thought maybe you'd slept off. And before we look at his next reply, let's just take a look at where he got that bit about electricity generated from a wind farm will travel to a transmission substation. And here it is, guys. It's on the website of a company called AZO Clean Tech. And in reply to Persephone saying, could you say that again, please? So it makes at least a bit of a sense. And man resorted to AI. It's a matter of efficiency and sustainability. Wind turbines do not release emissions that can pollute the air or water, with rare exceptions, and they do not require water for cooling. Wind turbines may also reduce electricity generation from fossil fuels, which results in lower total air pollution and carbon dioxide emissions. I thought you were asleep. What on earth does that have to do with transmission? said Persephone. Please stop copying and pasting unconnected twaddle. Talking about differences between each sources of energy, he said. Yes, replied Persephone, which is not relevant to what you said before, she said, stopping the bit where he'd said fire power lines, but a little different. We were talking about how you transfer the energy from the wind farm. Your use of antiquated English doesn't necessarily sub-tear me, he said, stopping rude. Please don't ruin my evening. Stop talking rubbish then, said Persephone, because I'm beginning to think you have no idea what you're talking about and are making up stories. Of course, if you do know what you're talking about, then it should be easy to explain. Have you wondered? It would sound rather insulting you keep asking the questions you ask the way you ask them. Have you wondered? It would sound rather insulting you keep not answering the questions I ask the way you answer them replied Persephone. Oh, please, have a good night, he said. This isn't worth being upset about. By this time, I was sitting up in bed, chatting to him on the laptop. Oh, please, go away and stop making up stories you know nothing about, said Persephone. I'll give you a phone back to your mate, the one I was talking to before, who had a brain and didn't just copy and paste stuff he found online, but doesn't understand. Probably time to get out the snacks, ladies and gentlemen. Eat them with caution. And I don't think there was a mate. I think there was just two versions of this man typing for himself, which was rarely successful, and using, well, you'll find out what later, which was also rarely successful. LOL, he said. Exactly. Your ridiculousness is funny. I like you, he said. I don't like you. I don't like people who copy and paste from the internet. To which our man replied, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're sitting comfortably. OK, I got this from an AI now. It's less artificial, lol, given the fact that the singularity is upon us in a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, be afraid, be very afraid. The transmission of electricity from wind farms and dams follows similar principles involving the use of power lines and transformers to transport the generated power to the grid. However, the generation process is different as wind farms convert wind energy into electricity, while dams harness water flow to generate power. The specifics of the transmission infrastructure might vary depending on factors such as distance, location and power capacity. You know, you can depend on AI to write you meaningless rubbish, but it'll be two or three times as long as anything you might have written for yourself. Oh, FGS, 
replied Persephone. Sometimes for ease it's best, he said, in reply to her saying she didn't like people who copy and paste. If you want to write total meaningless rubbish, use AI, said Persephone. Of course, if you want something to make sense, you might have to write it yourself. But I just did love, he said, in reply to her saying if you want to write total meaningless rubbish, use AI. Yeah, you did. So you either write meaningless rubbish or copy and paste from the internet. So it's perfectly obvious you have no idea at all what you're talking about. So do you want to tell me who you really are and what you really do? Or shall I guess? I'm sure you get frustrated when you're about to explain something sophisticated stuff that's second nature to you, but entirely strange to another person sometimes. Yeah. You can, he said, in reply to her saying, shall I guess, you couldn't explain sophisticated stuff if your life depended on it. You have absolutely no idea how power's distributed, otherwise you'd have explained it. To which our man replied, LOL, I'm rolling, and sent some smiley faces. You don't even know the difference between an energy source and distributing it. Yes, she said, because you're too stupid to know what I'm talking about and too stupid to understand what you copied and pasted. OK, he said, you caught me. I'm actually a cobbler down 10 Downing Street. Lots more laughing faces. Bollocks, you're a scammer from Lagos, she said. Chat GPT has washed me up, he said. You can say that again, pal. I'm not actually, he said. A booger then, said Persephone, and you might think... Bingo, she's got it. LOL, he said. What's that? Grow up, said Persephone. The Ivory Coast, he said. That makes a change, said Persephone. Question mark, he said. No, I'm asking. Being from the Ivory Coast makes a change. Most idiotic dimwit scams are from Nigeria. I'm not from there, he said. I'm only asking if you meant a place from the country Ivory Coast. Oh, said Persephone, you are from Nigeria. When you said this, he said, quoting where she'd said a booja then. So you know very well where a booja is and I'll assume that's where you are. No, I'm in Amsterdam, he said. Yeah, and I'm Queen Nefertiti. He sent lots of laughing faces. Now go and scam someone else. Goodbye. God, you're quick with it, he said. One of us has to have a brain, said Persephone, and it definitely isn't you. I'm genuinely a good guy, he said, and I swear I've never scammed anybody my whole life. And I'm genuinely Queen Nefertiti, and I swear I've never left Egypt. I just wanted to be friends and genuinely ask for a little help later on, if you could, said our man, trying to explain away the fact that he was going to ask her for money. Bollocks, replied Persephone. I swear this is the truth, but it was a matter of if you wanted to or not. Yeah, and I swear I'm Queen Nefertiti. What if I agree to be on video with you? So your idea of bringing friends is to lie. How does that work? What if you do? Will that change the fact that you lied and you have no bloody idea what you're talking about? Not necessarily so. It's to see if anyone I see could potentially change my situation if they'd wanted to. I'm a lucid dreamer. And what situation would that be? That isn't usually used as a euphemism for lying, cheating and stealing. Invest in my dream of starting a data analytics company by investing in my human capacity to attain the necessary skills to do so, said Chat GPT. Oh, FGS, replied Persephone. Well, not that now. If your knowledge of data analytics is as comprehensive as your knowledge of power production and distribution, you'd be better off buying a box of Lego. He said some more laughing faces. You're ripping me apart, he said with some more laughing faces. Because you're a lying idiot, said Persephone. Please, the latter, yes, he said, in reply to her saying he's a lying idiot. The former, not so much. Both, you barely told me a single thing that's true. I'm not a liar. I just tell the truth in stages and stuff. You're a liar. You haven't told me anything that's true yet. Love, you're a joy to talk to, he said. Sadly, you aren't. OK, the truth is, I'm just trying to get a good laptop to learn data analytics and get a remote job and teach people how to get out from the rat race with their morals intact. Bollocks, replied Persephone. Essentially, I'm trying to be a valuable member of society. Yeah, well, you have a lot of trying to do. Yes, it sounds stupid, but it's true. I'm an int J. I come up with crazy Machiavellian ideas. And if you really are in Amsterdam, which I know you aren't, and you get caught stealing, you won't be learning data analytics. You'll be learning how to cook prison food. But all for the general good, he said. 
But as we both know, you're in Nigeria. We both also know that you won't get caught because the police don't care. Good Lord, he said. You're a gym. That's better than being a lying idiot like you. I should make a video and put you on TikTok. OK, what do you want from me now? Nothing, you're too much of a liar. I'm not lying, said our man. Oh, FGS, said Persephone. And at that point, our man gave up and blocked Persephone. I hope you enjoyed Jeffrey Bates' episode two. I hope you didn't choke on too many of those snacks. If you did enjoy it, please like it. Please share it. Please comment down below. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in another video.